And I feel we're just another kind of part of the legacy. You know, we're not reinventing it. We're just doing due diligence to it. And we are continuing that legacy, hopefully, in a, in a respectful way. Does that make you feel better or worse? It doesn't make me feel anything. Ghost in the Shell, directed by Rupert Sanders, takes place in a future of cybernetic implants, cyber-biological enhancements, and in the case of their latest breakthrough, the first robot to have a human brain. This cyborg, named Major, is enlisted by the government to take down a new cyber-terrorist threat. But of course, not everything goes as expected. So, okay, there's a lot stacked against this film from the onset. The whole whitewashing controversy, the pressure of adapting such a beloved and intellectual Asian property for the Western market, and the fact that the director himself said of the original 1995 anime film, it's too philosophical and too introspective. All things aside, that's not a great foundation to build an adaptation upon, and unfortunately, it shows. What's delivered here is a reinvention, and a tragically ironic one at that. Choosing to focus on the extremely paint-by-numbers origin story of Major, instead of exploring some of the truly fascinating, perspective-changing themes and ideas that are inherent within AI science fiction and the 1995 film. The ideas delivered in this film dealt with questions of identity, and if you stretch it, how the difference in perspective and the uncertainty of memory informs that identity. That's really kind of it, unfortunately. Try as they might, sadly there is no ghost in this shell. But it is a very pretty shell. Credit is due to the amazing production design and visual world building, helmed by Jess Hall and Jen Rolfs, reminiscent of films like Blade Runner and Fifth Element. The Kiwi Weta Workshop also deserves major mention, as their diligence with practical effects gives this film at least some sense of legitimacy. In terms of Scarlett Johansson, I felt that she did the best she could with the material, trying to throw in the bulk of her characterization through physicality. I don't think her casting was an issue of whitewashing necessarily, rather it's what was done in the story that's the true offence. No spoilers, but if you think about it even a little, it quickly becomes uncomfortable, creepy, and uh, kind of racist. So there you go. Every opportunity this Ghost in the Shell gets to elevate its material is one it simply just doesn't take. And it's sad because it not only undermines the source material, but it also detracts from the female lad action film and discourages Hollywood from taking chances. But it doesn't have to be this way. If you're sick of seeing the same story over and over again like I am, then don't watch this film. Watch the original 1995 film, because you have to remember, Hollywood is just a mad child acting out, and you're the one who's in control. You have the money, and if this film isn't about making money, then I have no idea what it really is about. Typical of humans. They scratch the surface and never think to look within.